Alrighty. In this video, I'll work through, uh, well, at least a couple of these problems. So the first one is, uh, we have a base of a circle of radius two centered about the origin, and then the cross sections that are perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. So let's draw a uh, fully labeled representation of the shape, the representative slice, and then we'll draw or write out a definite integral that gives the volume of that particular shape. So here we have a circle And let's say this radius was two, so this number is two, this number is two, this is negative two, and this is negative two. There. And now we have cross sections that are perpendicular to the x-axis, which means all the cross sections have to be going in that direction because when you draw something this way, you're perpendicular to the x-axis. And now we need to draw a square somehow coming out of the image, but we can't really do that when we're looking at it from the top down. So what we're going to have to do is that the, the square that's coming out towards us, we're going to lay it flat on the image. So if the square were coming out directly towards us, it would look like this. We, all we would see is just a straight line, nothing else. So if we take that square and then we lay it flat, um, it's going to look like this. Now, the closer you get to the edge of the circle, the smaller the square is going to get because all, well, four sides have to be the same length. So if we take a, uh, a square at that dimension, it's only going to go out this far, and then go up, and then go out again. Now, we haven't really labeled anything here. So the first thing we need to label is the equation of the circle itself. So that equation is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But the radius we're given is 2, so this will be x squared equals y, x squared plus y squared equals 4. Now, as for the dimensions of the square themselves, we can say that this distance from here to here is y. And in fact, if you weren't sure as to why that is the case, if I ask you for the coordinates of this point on the green circle, in fact, I'll use the green color to indicate that. If I asked for the location of that point on the circumference of the circle, it would be some coordinates x comma y, where x would be the distance from here to here, or the distance from here to here, and then from this point, we could go up y units. So the distance from the x-axis to any point above or below is the y-coordinate. So hopefully we recognize that this distance is y. Well, if that distance is y, and because of the symmetry of a circle, that distance must be y as well. So this total dimension here becomes 2y this dimension becomes 2y as well. And now we can draw a representative square. So this is any square that's coming out of the page towards us. This is not one specific one, but for any square that's coming out of the page towards us, we know that the two dimensions are going to be 2y and 2y. We can take a breather here and say, well, the area of that representative shape is going to be length times the width, or side squared, which is going to be 2y times 2y, or 2y the quantity squared, which is going to be 4y squared, if we apply the square to the 2 and to the y. Now, we recall that the question said that the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. That means that the thickness of the building that's coming out towards us is going to be a distance along the x-axis. So that's going to be the thickness of the wall of the building coming out towards us from the screen itself. 
So that's a very small x value. So we know that the volume is going to be the integral of the area of cross section dx because the width is always going to be uh, dx because the pictures coming out or the buildings are coming out towards us and they're perpendicular to the x-axis. And where do we start slicing? Well, we start slicing at negative 2 and we stop slicing at 2. So again, we are slicing here. These are all the individual buildings that are coming out towards us. And then we continue doing this until we get to the other end of the island or the other end of the circle, uh, which is at 2. Now, we can rewrite this as the integral from negative 2 to 2. The area of cross-section we already found earlier was 4y squared, and we're integrating this with respect to x. And the issue is we can't do that. We cannot integrate a function of y with respect to x. So what we need to do is use the equation of the circle we had earlier in order to get rid of the y and change it to a function of x. So if we write off to the side, well, we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to, in fact, I'll color code this so you guys see where these things are coming from. If x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, then we can solve for y squared and get 4 minus x squared is equal to y squared. Well, this y squared can be used to replace, oops, the red y squared, which is right there. In fact, I need a times 4, so I could rewrite it as 4y squared would be 4 times 4 minus the quantity, uh, 4 times 4 minus x squared. So what we can do is rewrite this integral from negative 2 to 2 of 4 times 4 minus x squared dx. Which is the exact same thing we have here. Now, right, let me write it down to show you that we do indeed get the same answer if we were to convert one to the other. Coming back here, if we were to apply the square to both of these terms on the inside, this integral would become the integral from negative 2 to 2 of 2 squared times radical 4 minus x squared squared with respect to x, which would be the integral from negative 2 to 2 of 4 times the quantity 4 minus x squared dx. When we apply the square to a radical, the two essentially get rid of each other. And this is, in fact, the exact same integral we found here. The reason why someone might get this answer versus this one is that instead of substituting in y squared for y squared, what happens if we had solved for y itself? Well, we would have gotten y is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now, if we had taken this expression and plugged it in there, we would end up with the blue answer. So again, both of them are the exact same thing. Um, algebraically, I'm expecting you to know properties of exponents as taught in intermediate algebra and be able to see that the answers are numerically equivalent. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one's a circle again, so maybe we'll do uh, number three, where the base is a square. So here we have a, a base is a square with vertices at, well, those points. And so basically the center is the origin again, because you're going up to, over to, up to, down to, and, and so on. And the cross sections are rectangles of height, but the height is not a number. The height is given by this function, which is going to change based on where you are. So when x is zero, let's say you're standing at the origin, 
the height will be four because you plug in zero here. And if you go to x equals one, then negative one squared would be negative one plus four would be three. Similarly, so basically you can imagine a square. This is just a rough sketch. It's a bad square. The height of the rectangle coming out towards you will be the highest right in the middle. But as you go further and further out towards the edges, away from zero, the height is going to decrease. So the base will still be there, but the height might only be this much. So by the time you get to the very edge, the height, it's just a degenerate rectangle, which is just a line. It's not going to have a height coming out uh, of the screen. So again, coming back here, we know that we need to be perpendicular to the x-axis. So let's draw a rough sketch first. So that's my square. I might be inclined to move it a little bit to the right to center it. That there it is, roughly speaking. And again, this is two comma two. This is two comma negative two, negative two comma negative two, and negative two comma two. Those are the vertices of the square, centered at the origin, as I mentioned. Now, the stuff that's coming out towards you. So let's say I make a rectangle here. Because it's further to the edge, it's not going to be as tall. And then for the inner one, I'll use a different color just to show you that this one's going to be much taller because of where it is. This one might go really far out of there. Even though the picture is not scaled correctly, this is just to get the point across that the orange one that I just drew is coming really, really far out towards the center. And then the green one that I had earlier is, is coming out of the screen, but it's not as tall of a building. So for the orange one, this distance is given by negative x squared plus 4. That's the function that gives the height of the rectangle. And then for the green one, let me erase this. This distance is given by the same function as well, negative x squared plus plus four. So depending on where your x value is, your your height of the rectangle coming out of the screen is going to change. The same thing is going to happen on the left region as well. But regardless of where the rectangle is, we fundamentally still have a rectangle. So I'll draw the ideal rectangle here, or a representative slice. The distance that's coming out of the screen towards us is always going to be negative x squared plus four. This distance, however, never changes. That base is always sitting on the square. So I know from looking at, well, the dimensions of the square, the distance from here to here is 2, because this y-coordinate is 2. And then the distance from here to here is also 2, because the y-coordinate is negative 2. So if you have 2 above and 2 below, that whole distance becomes 2 plus 2, which is 4. So now we can say that the area of cross section will always be length times width because it's a rectangle. So that's going to be four times negative x squared plus four. So if I know my area of cross section, now I can write my integral. The volume is going to be the integral from where do we start slicing? We start at the leftmost endpoint, which is negative two. And then we keep slicing until we get to the rightmost endpoint, which is positive two. And then we integrate the area of cross section with respect to x, because the question told us that these cross sections are perpendicular to the x axis. This now becomes the integral from negative 2 to 2. The area of cross section we just found was 4 times negative x squared plus 4 with respect to x which hopefully is right there. 
integral from negative two to two, four times the quantity four minus x squared with respect to x. Now, it, the question doesn't ask for us to do this, but let's say that I did ask as a free response to find the volume itself, not just set up the integral. So this one I'll take all the way to the end because it's, well, simple enough. So first I could distribute the four or I could yank it out. I don't wanna deal with that four the entire time. So I can just rewrite it as negative x squared plus four being integrated with respect to x. So this would become four times the quantity negative x cubed over three plus 4x evaluated from negative 2 to 2, which would give us 4 times the quantity negative 8 thirds plus 8 minus uh, negative 2 thirds to the cube would be negative 8, so positive 8 thirds minus 8. And I'll keep the 4 out inside becomes negative 8 thirds plus 8 minus 8 thirds plus 8. I just distributed the negative. Um, so this would be 4 times 8 times 8 plus 8 is 16 minus negative 8 thirds minus another 8 thirds would be 2 times that so 16 thirds which would be 4 times 48 minus 16 over 3, just 4 times 32 over 3. And what is that? 8, 128 over 3. That will be if the question had said, you know, find me the actual numerical volume. Then you would need to take it all the way to the end and uh, determine what the numerical value of the answer is using FDC2. Hopefully that helps. Uh, take a look at these videos and if, if this video makes sense and you're able to carry on and solve the other problems, fantastic. If you still run into other issues, uh, send me a message on Slack and I'll record something similar for the other three videos. But ideally, I, I don't wanna publish solutions for everything. Um, I want you guys to either present solutions on Slack so I can point out where you're making a mistake or try to help each other out and uh, share solutions if you have them and they're correct.